Thank you so much for joining us today for this live yoga practice with the groups from the group from the Breast Friends Organization in Tigard, Oregon. Their link to their website is listed in the description below if you would like more information about this wonderful, supportive organization. My name is Christine, and today's practice is going to be all about taking care of our bodies, taking care of our nervous systems, and especially getting some relief into our shoulders. So if you have a couple of blocks, a blanket, a towel, a yoga bolster, anything like that, bring it on down to the floor with you. We're going to set it up to go across the mat. So if you're using a block, you'll set it right about where your shoulder blades will be. Same thing if you're using a bolster. Same thing if you're using a blanket. We'll just open up the blanket and or a beach towel or bath towel, whatever you have around. And we'll just roll it up into a little cylinder to go across the mat this way. So whatever works best for you. Since I do have the bolster, I'm going to use that. And you may also want to have two props. You might not need a support for your head, but you might. So take everything down with you so that you have it all available and you don't have to get up off your mat once you get down there. We'll center ourselves on our mats. And like I said, you'll put your support right underneath the shoulder blades here. And oh, I have got a message in the chat. I saw was longer than contact information. So I wanna make sure. Oh, oh, wonderful, Myra, thank you so much. I'll, I'll read the whole string after our practice. But for right now, let's get on down to the ground. And you'll just sort of lower yourself down so that your support is right underneath your shoulder blades. So the bottom of the support, the block, the roll, whatever you're using is right at the bottom of the shoulder blades, about where a bra strap would be. If you're comfortable with it, you can simply let your head come all the way down to the ground. If that's too much for your neck, you can take a yoga block, or a pillow or a folded up blanket or something to support your head here. But you do want your bolster to be underneath your arms so that your shoulder, shoulder blades are supported and your arms can extend beyond and above the bolster. And now I've got too much junk around me so I need room for my arms to spread wide. <laughs> Once you get there, take a nice big inhale and let it go with a big sigh. Maybe do that a couple of times. And again, if you start with your head not supportive and this becomes too intense, grab a pillow, make yourself comfortable. And then as far as the legs go, you can keep your knees bent and your feet on the ground or you can bring the soles of your feet together and take your knees out wide for butterfly posture, Baddha Konasana. Or you could walk your feet out wide and bring your knees together for constructive rest pose. And if it's okay in your low back, you might simply just wanna stretch your legs out long. Everybody's different, everybody has different needs. So please take the time to experiment a little bit, get curious about what feels best in your body. I'm gonna practice equanimity today. I have a fruit fly that's hanging around about my face and I'm just going to let him be. Hopefully I can get through without letting that encroach on my practice at all. So if you notice any distractions around you, just redirect your attention to your practice, to your breath. 
And right here, we're just taking the time to let our shoulders and our heart open. And we spend a lot of many hours every day with the shoulders rounded forward. So this is just might seem like, oh, we're, we're going to be here for a few minutes. It's a long time. But in the grand scheme of things, this is really a small amount of time to counteract all of that forward folding we do during the day. So just let yourself relax here. You might notice a little tension in your arms, in your jaw, your forehead. See if you can encourage any of those places, all of those places, to soften, to relax, to be heavy. Release the hinge of your jaw. Just let yourself gradually open. Maybe focus on the breath right at the heart center. Feeling the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe. Letting all of the connective tissue and the ligaments and tendons and muscles and fascia just gradually soften and smooth out. If you like, you might even reach your arms alongside your ears, bringing the backs of your hands to the ground. Again, just play with it and experiment a little, see what feels best for you. Always be willing to change it up if something becomes really uncomfortable. Or maybe if it's just a little uncomfortable, maybe it's a gradual change that you're just allowing to happen and you can breathe through it. And it is true, science has shown us that our thoughts inform our emotions and our emotions inform our hormones. So when we're scared or angry or upset, we might be in the stress response and having cortisol and adrenaline running through the body. And when that happens, all of the body's healthy processes, the ability to sleep and have healthy digestion, they get shortchanged because we're focused on the threat. So when we think happy thoughts, when we feel good, then we have endorphins and dopamine and oxytocin running through our bodies. And those do support healing and digestion and good sleep. So I invite you as we're here, just letting the body open gradually, focusing on the heart center to maybe think of one thing in your life that you're grateful for, that you appreciate, something in your daily life, like maybe just a cup of coffee in the morning or quiet sunrise. Maybe it's your furry family member. Whatever it is, something that you can hold on to and let the feeling of gratitude and appreciation just sort of permeate throughout your body. Triggering those supportive hormones to bring your body to a place where it can heal and grow. Just another minute here. And then we'll find some movement. You might check in again with any of those places you found tension at the beginning of your practice and see if they have re-engaged and see if you can invite them to soften a bit more.
just another couple breaths here. Letting a sense of appreciation just wash over you. And then as you're ready, we'll all together bring the knees up towards the sky. Shift your hips over to the right and then bring your right arm over towards the left side of your body. And press yourself up so that now this little muscle right underneath the armpit is supported by your bolster. And here I am going to grab a block to support my head. I encourage you to grab a pillow or a or whatever you've got nearby to support your head here too. And you can see I've got my left arm extended above the bolster and below my head support. I've got my knees bent and stacked. My ankles are stacked, my hips are stacked. And then we're gonna bring that right palm to the left palm so the hands are touching. With your next inhale, we're gonna reach that right arm up and towards the back of the body. And with your exhale, we're gonna bring that right hand all the way back down to the left hand. Keep the hips stacked. We're only moving in the shoulders and the rib cage here. So that right arm might not come back very far or maybe it touches the ground back there. Like I said, everybody's different, different ranges of motion. Maybe you're just lifting a little bit. If this is not um, comfortable for you at all to move that right arm, you can simply roll forward and back on your support to give yourself a little massage. Inhale as you rock back. Exhale, using your core to keep those hips nice and stable. You might watch your hand as it moves to get a little healthy movement in the neck as well. Tracking your right thumb as far as you can go. Let's do two more of these. And the next time the hands come together, that's the last time. If it feels nice to you, you might want to stay right here, rocking back and forth on your support, just giving yourself a massage. If you want a little more movement, you could reach that right arm up alongside the right ear and stretch that right leg out nice and long too, pressing into your right heel, reaching the right fingertips away. Inhale here, exhale to draw that right knee towards the right elbow. Inhale, find length. Exhale, use your core to keep your hips nice and stable here and to draw the elbow in towards the knee. Both knee and elbow coming to center. And again, if that right arm isn't happy today, you could just be moving the right leg. If the right leg isn't happy today, you could just be moving the right arm. So make this your practice. Let's just do a couple more here on this side. And then we'll inhale, length, exhale, restack the body, restack the knees. And then we'll press ourselves up just a little bit, find a little bit more massage if you haven't gotten enough here. And as you're ready, we're just gonna shift the hips to the left 
and roll to the right side. So now the right arm is extended. We've got this little muscle underneath the armpit. I really do have to look up the name of that muscle. I call it my mouse muscle because that's that's what gets me is that computer mouse. And you might just play with it a little bit here, rolling forward and back, giving yourself a little massage to start with. And you could just stay right here, just finding different ways you might roll onto your support to massage that little muscle there. And then we'll stack that left hand on the right hand, stack the knees, the ankles, the hips, Inhale to reach that left arm up and back any amount. Exhale to bring it together again. Track your hand, getting some movement in the neck. And again, it doesn't matter how far back that hand goes. Just to the best of your ability. few more using your inhales to open up, exhale to draw inward again. Let's do two more. It's really hard for me to keep count when I'm also trying to talk. So hopefully it's about even on each side. And then we'll come back to center. And again, stay here and massage, or maybe reach the left arm alongside the left ear, press the left heel back, inhale, find length, exhale, elbow to knee, coming into center. You can make this a really good strengthening exercise for your core and your hips by really engaging the belly. Use your breath. Keep your attention focused on your practice. Let's do two more here. Again, both the arm and leg, just the arm, just the leg, whatever feels right for you today. Last time we'll draw into center. One more inhale, stretch everything out nice and long. And then we'll restack the hands, the knees, come back to center, maybe take a couple more rolls on your support to massage those muscles. And then we'll roll all the way towards the right, press yourself up. And we're just going to press up long enough to change the orientation of our support. So instead of being across the mat now, it's down lengthwise. And depending on how long your support is, maybe you need to butt it up together. I'm pretty short and my bolster's pretty long, so I don't think I'm going to need anything further. And here, you can also decide how you want to be laying on your bolster. You can have it butted right up to your sacrum before you lower your spine down. Or if it feels better for your back, you can be sitting and then lay back. So the whole sacrum and the whole spine is supported. And I am a little long for this this way. So I would use a block right here, but I'm gonna bring my sacrum right against the end and then lay back and now my head is supported. And again, find the posture that works best for your legs here and just visualize your whole body now opening up. You could send your arms out into a T shape find constructive rest or butterfly or legs straight out. 
You could reach your arms up alongside your ears or maybe take cactus arms or W shape in your arms. Or maybe you even have your arms down low so the hands are by the hips. We're all in different places today, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So honor that. And again, we're going to just stay here in stillness for a while, letting the time and gravity do all of the work here for you. You might tuck your chin a little bit to make sure that your neck is protected. And I'm always really focused on the breath in my practice and I invite you to do the same thing. Just keeping your awareness on the rise and fall, the ebb and the flow of the breath. But I always try to teach yoga in a really personalized way. I don't want to see everybody doing the same thing the same way. That's not the goal. The goal is to nourish our own individual bodies. And especially for us women, and, and really for men too, or, or, or anybody who identifies as any gender, when we're children, we're automatically told we have to be different than we are. My own personal um, journey, you know, as being a little girl, I remember being told, Quit your crying, quiet down, go change your clothes, put on some shoes, stop singing, whatever it was. Before we even have an opportunity to develop our own personalities or to find ourselves or explore, we're automatically being told what we can't do and what we should do. I don't want to see any robots. I don't want to see anybody doing everything the same way. That's just boring. And it is not good for us to be stuffing our authentic selves down. So I invite you to embrace your own authenticity, to know that you, just the way you are, are perfect. You don't have to be anything that you don't want to be. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And for God's sake, if there's something in your life you want to say no to, say no. And again, from right here, you could stay here in stillness. Or maybe you bring those feet parallel, knees pointed up to the sky and bring your hands up towards the sky as well, palms facing each other. Inhale to reach your fingertips up as far as you can. And as you exhale, draw your arms down into the shoulder sockets and squeeze your support between the shoulder blades. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, draw down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, draw down. You might want to stay with that movement here or come back to stillness, or we could find a little nurturing for the brain synapses. We can inhale and send the right thumb tip and the left heel out and away. And then exhale to bring everything back to center. Inhale, left thumb tip down, right heel away. Exhale, back to center. As we do these movements where we're kind of at cross purposes, we are supporting the trillions of connections that we have in our brains by doing something a little bit different, something that takes a little bit of concentration. Use your inhale to find expansion. Use your exhale to come back into center. Let's just find a couple more on each side here.
One more on each side. Next time that left thumb tip goes down, that's the last time. We'll release the hands. Just let everything lay flat. Maybe send the legs out. If that's too much on the low back, keep the knees bent. Otherwise, just let yourself melt here for a moment. Opening up the spine. Opening up the heart. Supporting the low back. And then very carefully, we'll just come to roll off your support. Doesn't matter to which side. And we'll move the support out of the way for just a moment and we'll come to hands and knees. Now, if this is too hard on your wrists, you could use your fists for wrists, or you could come down to your forearms. We're just gonna find a few rounds of cat and cow here. Inhale to drop the belly, draw the heart forward, lift the tailbone. Exhale, press into your fingers, open up behind the shoulder blades. Inhale, roll the shoulders back away from the ears. Exhale, open up as much space between the shoulder blades as you can. As you inhale into cow, you might tuck your toes and bend your elbows and really lift that tailbone. As you exhale into cat, draw the belly button up towards the sky. Fine, untuck the toes, bring the chin towards the heart. And as always, you can make these movements as subtle or as generous as you like. If you're on fists, it just looks like this. If you're on forearms, it's a little bit more subtle but it just gets into the shoulders in a slightly different way. So whatever you prefer, maybe try a couple of repetitions with each different arm posture. And then we'll tuck the toes under, straighten out the arms, send the hips back towards the heels, pop those palms off the ground and bring the fingertips down and just let your heart sink down towards the ground any amount. Tuck the chin to keep the neck long, send the hips back towards the heels, open up across your armpits like opening up wings, squeezing the shoulder blades towards one another. Couple breaths right here. Next time you inhale, we'll come all the way back to tabletop position. We'll bring the hands underneath the shoulders again. And this time we'll take the knees out wide and the big toes together. Bring your right, or excuse me, we'll start with the left so you can see better. We'll bring the left hand right underneath the gaze. And we're gonna take those right fingertips to the left wrist. And we're just gonna drag the fingers alongside the inside of the left arm like you're pulling back the bow of a bow and arrow, up across the shoulders, up across the collarbones, and then reach that right arm up towards the sky. Beautiful open-hearted twist here, keeping the chin tucked to keep your neck safe. One more inhale as you reach the hand up, exhale, Bring that hand all the way back down to the ground, back of the hand right behind the left wrist. And then we'll drop down to that right shoulder in the right temple. Now, if that's too much for you, you've got your bolster right here. 
and you could drop down to the bolster to bring yourself up a little bit higher. So whatever feels good for you, you could stretch that left arm out nice and long, letting the palm or the fingertips land. Or you might let your left arm make a little um, cross across the right forearm so that it's sort of anchoring you down to the ground. Just let yourself be heavy here, getting into that right shoulder in a slightly different way. If you want a little more sensation, you could reach the left arm up to the sky or maybe bring the back of the left hand to the low back for a little half bind. So again, choose your own adventure. What is going to work best for you today? And again, if being all the way down on the floor doesn't help, you could use your bolster in any position to support yourself a little bit more here. So wherever you are, we'll be there for another couple of breaths. Just really let your body weight sink into that right shoulder. And then with your next inhale, we'll bring that left palm down to the ground, come back to tabletop in the upper body, keep the knees wide and the toes together. And then this time we'll take the right hand underneath the gaze, use your left fingertips, Keep in contact with your right arm as you drag those fingers all the way up, touching your beautiful, strong arms, and then reaching up towards the sky, twisting open as much as feels good for you, keeping the neck long. One more inhale here, reach for the sky. Exhale, we'll thread the needle here, bringing the back of the left hand down behind the right wrist, and then all the way through to the right before you lower down to your bolster or a pillow or whatever support you're using today or right on down to your mat. Stretch that right arm out long, pop up on the fingertips, anchor the forearm across the left forearm. Find what feels best to you today. Maybe you reach that hand up towards the sky or bring it to your low back. Again, you choose. Two more breaths here. And then we'll reach that right arm back down to the ground, press back up into your tabletop, align your hips and knees again. We'll take just a couple of rounds of cat and cow here to realign the hips and the spine and the neck. And then we'll send the hands out forward, come down to the forearms, stretch the legs out long, bring the hips, the thighs, the knees to your mat, untuck your toes. This is Sphinx posture. If this doesn't feel great for you, flip over onto your back and come into Shavasana or whatever resting pose feels good to you. We won't be here for very long, but we do want to keep the neck long for a moment. Maybe as you're here, you might go ahead and let the chin come down towards the heart and roll your ears from side to side, getting just a little more movement in the neck. So either in Sphinx Pose or Shavasana, bring your attention back to your heart again. 
back to that thing that you appreciate, that you love, that you're grateful for, something that you can count on every day. And let that appreciation flood your body one more time. And then either stay right where you are in Sphinx or Shavasana, or press yourself back up, coming into a tall seat. I like to sit on a support, so I'm gonna use my blanket today. And if you want to stay in Shavasana, feel free to do that as long as you like. You can never have too much Shavasana. But if you're joining me in a tall seat of any posture, legs crossed, out straight, sitting in a chair, whatever feels good to you. Then find that tall, beautiful spine, roll those shoulders up and back and down so the heart is lifted. If you wanna do that a couple times, you can definitely do that here. Let your body settle down, feel the ground underneath you. Lift the crown of your head and the base of your skull up towards the sky. Notice your next in-breath, filling up your whole torso. And let your next out-breath invite you to deeply relax. And then all together, we'll bring the hands to the heart, either gently bringing the palms together or maybe finding some expansion as you inhale and reach the arms up overhead. And then exhale to anchor your hands right at your heart. And in yoga, my very favorite mantra is the Shanti mantra. And it goes, Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. And it means, may all beings everywhere, and that includes each of you, be happy and free. And may our thoughts words, deeds, and actions contribute to that in some way. Om Shanti 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 Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Namaste.